Do you know what I found out the other day? Apparently, I'm a scammer. Here's the story. I've been running ads on Facebook to promote a video series I put together called Start Earning Online. That series, it's 100% free. I spent months putting it together, shooting videos in three different countries, and it's basically a crash course teaching people the basics of earning a living online, like I've been doing for the past almost eight years now. You sign up for the free series, you get nine full lessons, and then a couple of weeks later, I invite you to join my premium course if you'd like to learn more. So here's the ad I've been running for that. It has a a photo of a guy on a beach with a laptop and yes that is completely impractical you can't really use your laptop on the beach but it makes the point that when you work online you're not confined to an office or any particular location and I have text there at the top as well that says learn how to earn a living online so you can work from anywhere even if you're not great with computers so that's the ad I've had it running for a few weeks now and of course the internet being what it is I've had people in the comments telling me that the whole thing is a scam. People like Gary here. And when I asked Gary why he thinks it's a scam, and I asked him twice because I really wanted to know, well, I never heard back from Gary. But even better than Gary was this guy, Michael DeCock. DeCock. Michael writes that my whole Start Earning Online series is, and I quote, a load of great bullshit, with a capital B. And he goes on to say that the Start Earning Online by ndoherty.com, spell that wrong by the way, Michael, post you have shared is a false proclamation endorsed by website fraudsters to profit on uneducated individuals, thus it can be reported as spam under Facebook rules and regulations. Jesus, that's a fairly serious accusation there, Michael. Hey, here's an idea. How about we have a look at your profile and see what else you've been up to on Facebook? Hmm, sharing a conspiracy theory that the Israelis were responsible for 9-11, Japanese schoolgirl fantasy images, the US Capitol building has a statue of the Whore of Babylon, Trump is pro-God and pro-life, Obama behind entire Russia witch hunt, and this is my favorite, some lady has come forward and announced that she was subjected to CIA brainwashing techniques and child sex traffic to Hollywood at age 13 years and raped by Hollywood star Tom Hanks. And Nelson Mandela apparently murdered 24,206 people every year. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. So the impression I'm getting here, Michael, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the impression I'm getting is that you apparently believe all that batshit crazy stuff you shared publicly on Facebook. But my email series, the free email series about working online, created by a guy who has been working online for almost eight years himself, and has posted articles and videos and even monthly finance reports every single month for the past eight years to prove it. That sets off your bullshit detector. Not the 9-11 conspiracies or the Tom Hanks pedophile claims or the stuff about Nelson Mandela being a mass murderer. No, 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 all of that seems perfectly reasonable to you, Michael. But the claim that you can learn how to earn a living online so you can work from anywhere, even if you're not great with computers, that's just madness, that's ridiculous. That must be a false proclamation endorsed by website fraudsters to profit on uneducated individuals. Seriously, Michael, what kind of lunatic, bally go backwards world are you living in? Here, I'll tell you what I'll do for you. I'm going to assume that you're not beyond hope here. And I'm gonna give you a nice, simple 13 point checklist that you can use to better determine if something you see advertised online is a scam or not. And that way in future, you will be better able to tell what's legit and worthwhile versus what's actually a load of bullshit and a waste of your precious time. Does that sound good, Michael? Okay then. Let's begin. Number one, has the seller achieved what you want to achieve? A member of my premium course summed this up very nicely. He said, I just make sure that whoever is selling me the course has a track record of being excellent in whatever it is the course is about. It may seem obvious, but you'd be surprised how many courses I've come across that claim to be able to teach me how to use social media to gain 10,000 blog readers or how to make $1,000 a month on Periscope. Meanwhile, the course creator only has 20 Twitter followers or hasn't Periscoped in the last eight months. So that's very true. Check that the person selling you the product or the course or whatever has actually achieved the results they're promising you. Now, of course, there can be some exceptions to this. For example, Bill Belichick, the American football coach, he coaches guys how to play American football real good, but he never played American football all that well himself. But just because he wasn't a great player 
doesn't mean he isn't a great coach. And that brings us to number two, has the seller helped other people achieve what you want to achieve? To stick with the sports analogy for a second, a sports coach might not be able to hit a three-pointer or land a triple axle herself, but if she has a track record of helping other people do that kind of thing, especially people similar to you, then she's worth paying attention to. Now, how do you know if the product or service you're considering has helped other people? Well, usually through reviews and testimonials, that's how you know. So if the product is available for purchase through Amazon, for example, you can tell pretty quick if it's the real deal by looking at the reviews. Oh look, the Cargo Ship Diaries by Niall Doherty, 72 customer reviews, average of 4.5 stars, Jesus, that must be good. Now be sure to pay attention to both the quality and the quantity of the reviews, because anyone can throw up an ebook on Amazon and they can get their man or babysitter to post a couple of five star reviews, but that doesn't necessarily mean the book is worth reading. If, however, there are a few dozen four and five star reviews or hundreds or thousands, then it's a safe bet that the book is the real deal. As for testimonials, they're a little bit different because they're usually provided by whoever is selling you the product and they can therefore be less trustworthy. Legit testimonials, they usually have one or more of the following characteristics. First, they are actual screenshots of emails or messages received from customers as opposed to copied and pasted text, which is much easier to modify or to fabricate. Second, they are not anonymous, so you can actually see the real names of the people who said these things. Third, they are attached to a real photo of the customer. And fourth, if it's a video testimonial, the person should clearly be a real customer and not some cheesy actor. Where did I park my car? Oh no. Number three, is the seller a real person you can get in touch with? And by that I mean, do they personally respond to messages you send them? Or do they appear to be an all too perfect automation that you can never get in touch with or receive a straight answer from? Number four, can you get in touch with real customers of the product or service? Often you can track them down and find their contact information via reviews or testimonials. And failing that, you can just simply reach out to the seller and ask that they put you in touch with some happy customers. And if they refuse to do that, if they can't do that, that's a red flag. Well, unless of course you're buying financial services or something like that, in which case it's probably illegal for the seller to share that kind of information with you. But you know, these are more guidelines. They don't have to check all of these boxes but the more the better. Number five, does the seller actually show you the product details? This could take the form of technical specifications, it could be a list of course materials, it could be a video demonstration, or something else along those lines. For example, I show people exactly what the inside of my premium course looks like in this video tour that you're seeing a clip of now. Number six, does the seller have a substantial following online? Check out their social media accounts. Do they have only 12 followers on Twitter? Do they have like just a handful of likes on Facebook and if they have lots of followers are they engaging with those followers regularly and that's important to check because it's really easy nowadays to buy a few thousand followers or likes but engagement will usually be very low on those social media accounts number seven is the product expensive generally speaking and this is a big generalization but the more expensive something is the better and in the words of renowned online entrepreneur Derek Sivers people who spend more for the product or service value it more and get more use out of it but aside from that, if the price seems too good to be true, it usually is. Number eight, do they use a secure payment portal? You should definitely, definitely, definitely check this before you enter any credit card information or submit any payment details. And it's really easy to tell if a checkout page is secure via the lock in the address bar of your browser. Now, you should note that some sellers, they will send you to a secure site like PayPal to process your payment. And that's not ideal, but that, that's okay too. Number nine, is there a guarantee? Make sure they offer a full money back guarantee before you buy. You should know how long that guarantee lasts for and if you have to meet any particular requirements before you qualify for a refund. Number 10, does the seller have a registered business in good standing? When you go to the checkout for my premium course, you see my company registration details there in the sidebar and you can then go to the Wyoming Secretary of State website because my business is registered in Wyoming and you can type in disrupting the rattlement, you can hit search and you can verify those details yourself. And you should be able to do similar with any company you engage with. If you can't and the seller can't give you a good reason why, 
that's another red flag. Number 11, is there small print and have you read it? So scammers, they'll often try to hide sneaky stuff in the small print. So make sure you read any small print, any terms and conditions, any privacy policy on or linked from the sales page of the product or service you're considering, especially especially if it has a high price tag. Number 12, have you searched online for bad reviews? If something truly is a scam, there are probably a whole bunch of people shouting from the internet rooftops about it. And you can usually find them via a quick Google search. Now, if you find one or two people complaining, that's usually nothing to worry about. Don't need to take that too seriously because, I mean, if you look hard enough, you can even find bad reviews of the Shawshank Redemption online. And that's like a perfect movie, so. But if you find loads of bad reviews from reputable looking sources, well then you should definitely take that as a sign to steer clear. Number 13, are you ashamed to be buying this thing? You see the way it works, the scammiest products online are usually the most taboo because sellers know many buyers will be too ashamed to chase them up for a refund or to criticize them publicly. For example, no man is gonna make a video detailing the ineffectiveness of that penis enlargement device he bought off Amazon last month. Stupid piece of shit. So if the thing you're buying is something you'd be ashamed to admit publicly, you'd best be extra diligent with the other items on this list. And lastly, a little bonus tip for you here. This article from The Telegraph reports that scammers often intentionally use bad spelling and grammar in their emails and messages. And they do that to quickly weed out people who are too intelligent to fall for the scam. Because apparently the type of person who would overlook such ridiculously obvious red flags is exactly the type of person who will overlook all their other ridiculous claims and send them money. So if in doubt, run spell check. All right, there you have it, Michael. Hopefully now you'll take off the tinfoil hat, you'll stop believing the world is flat, and you'll have a little think for yourself before you go saying something is bullshit in future. Okay, great. For everyone else watching this, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hit the like button, that'll be great. Subscribe if you want to see my next video. I put out a new video every week. And I'm not sure if I mentioned at the start of the video, but I'm in Copenhagen at the moment. So we'll wrap this video up with a bit of a Copenhagen montage. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video. Slide to the next, next, next. I thought.